Each of us has our ambitions and dreams, and each of us faces unique challenges. In today's video, we'll take your English skills to the next level. Get ready for two powerful conversations that will inspire you and sharpen your listening. First, you'll enjoy a touching story with captions to help you follow along and focus. Then, we'll switch things up for the second conversation. You'll watch it twice, once without captions to boost your listening skills, and then again in a duet style where you take the role of the broadcaster. After that, we will move to our white sport to review the most prominent terms and vocabulary that appeared in the two conversations to fill our own dictionary. Before we dive in, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the MA English channel for more great content. Hey there! I couldn't help but notice that you look like someone with a story to tell. What's your name, and how old are you? Hi. I'm Max, and I'm 14 years old. Nice to meet you, Max. You seem like a smart guy. What's something you're really passionate about? Oh, I'm really into programming. I spend most of my time learning how to code. I know it sounds a bit geeky for someone my age, but I love it. Not geeky at all. That's amazing. At 14, most kids are just trying to figure out how to use their phones properly, and here you are, programming. How did you get into that? Well, I've always loved computers. My dad is a tech guy, so we'd spend time together fixing things around the house. One day, I saw this online course on programming, and it just clicked. I started watching tutorials, building small projects, and I've been hooked ever since. Wow, that's impressive. You must be super talented at it. What's your goal with programming? Where do you see yourself in the future? You know, I've been thinking about that a lot. My goal is to prove that nothing is impossible. I want to excel in programming, not just for me, but for my family. They've been there for me through everything. I guess you could say my biggest goal is to make them proud. That's a beautiful goal, Max. It's clear your family means a lot to you. Can you tell us more about them? Yeah, my parents are everything to me. They've always believed in me, even when things got tough. Like, when I was younger, I struggled a lot because, well, I've been in this wheelchair for most of my life. There were times when I'd get picked on at school, and people would say some pretty mean things. I'm really sorry to hear that. How did you deal with it? It wasn't easy. Some kids would call me names or make fun of how I had to do things differently. There were days when I didn't even want to go to school. But my parents, they never let me feel sorry for myself. My dad always told me, Max, you're stronger than anyone who tries to bring you down, and my mom, well, she'd always bake me cookies to cheer me up. I guess cookies are her way of solving everything. Cookies do have magical powers. So despite all of that, you've kept going, and now you're a genius at programming. That's pretty incredible. Thanks. Yeah. I try to focus on the good stuff. My parents have done so much for me, so I feel like I owe it to them to do my best. My dream is to create something big, maybe a game or software that changes the world. But even more than that, I want my parents to see that their support wasn't for nothing. That's a powerful goal, Max. I'm sure they're already so proud of you. Have you ever had moments where you felt like giving up? Oh, definitely. There were times when coding felt impossible, like when you've been staring at the same screen for hours, and nothing works. But then I remember why I started, and it keeps me going. Plus, I've met some really awesome people online who help me when I'm stuck. It's like a whole coding family. It sounds like you've built a strong support system. 
But let me ask you this, what's been the hardest part of your journey? Honestly, it's not the coding or the wheelchair, but dealing with people's reactions. Some people think I can't do anything because of the chair, like they underestimate me. That used to bother me a lot, but now, I just use it as motivation. I'm going to prove them wrong. That's such a strong mindset to have, Max. You're really showing everyone that your wheelchair doesn't define you. Yeah, and it's not like I'm doing it alone. I've got my family, and I've got friends who get me. Sure, some days are tough, but I've learned to find the humor in it, too. Like, one time, my cousin tried to race me in his bike, and I totally beat him. I love that. So not only are you a brilliant programmer, but you're also unbeatable in a race. You really are unstoppable. Well, I try. And you know what? That's kind of my message to everyone. It doesn't matter what challenges you face, physical, emotional, or whatever. If you've got a passion and people who believe in you, you can do anything. Max, you've inspired me, and I'm sure everyone watching feels the same way. Your determination, talent, and heart are what the world needs more of. I have no doubt you're going to achieve amazing things. Hey there! You've got this athletic vibe about you, what's your name, and how old are you? Hi, I'm Carolina and I'm 20. Nice to meet you, I see you holding a tennis racket but I will pretend to be surprised and ask you about your favorite sport. Yeah, I play tennis. It's been my passion for years now. That's a serious sport. How did you get started? Well, I actually started when I was about 10. My dad used to take me to the park and we just hit the ball around for fun. I wasn't serious about it at first, honestly. A lot of people didn't really believe I could make it far, so I didn't believe it either. Wow, that must have been tough. Who didn't believe in you? Most people outside my family, really. You know how it is, people see a girl with big dreams and they're quick to say, oh, it's just a hobby. But my parents? They've always had my back. They kept pushing me, even when I wasn't sure if I could do it. It sounds like you've got an amazing support system. So, how did you go from just hitting the ball around in the park to becoming a serious tennis player? Well, there was this one coach. I was 14 when I started working with him. At first, I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't want to disappoint my parents or waste time on something that felt like a long shot. But this coach? He saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. He convinced me to take it seriously to give it my all. You must have been on top of the world. But I get the sense it wasn't all smooth sailing? Yeah, not exactly. I was doing great for a while but then. I got injured. It was during a match. I was pushing myself really going for it and then. I felt this sharp pain in my knee. Turns out I tore a ligament. That was it for a while I had to stop playing completely. That sounds devastating. How did you deal with it? At first? Not well. I was angry, frustrated. I couldn't play, couldn't train, and I felt like everything I'd worked for was slipping away. There were days when I thought about giving up, you know? Like, maybe this is a sign that tennis just isn't for me. But something tells me you didn't give up. Nope. My family wasn't about to let me quit that easily. My dad especially, he kept reminding me that setbacks are just part of the journey. He'd say, champions aren't the ones who never get knocked down, they're the ones who keep getting back up. Sounds like some serious wisdom from your dad. So, what did you do next? Well, I went through rehab for my knee and it took a while, but I'm finally getting back into training. It's been slow and it's frustrating sometimes because I'm not where I used to be. But I'm more determined than ever now. I've got this fire in me to come back stronger. That's an incredible mindset, Carolina. A lot of people would have given up, but you're pushing through. So, what's been the hardest part of this journey for you? Honestly, the hardest part wasn't the injury itself but the doubt that came with it. 
There were moments when I felt like maybe everyone who didn't believe in me was right. But every time I started feeling that way my family was there to pull me out of it. And now my coach is back in my corner, pushing me to reach new heights. So, what's next for you? Any big tournaments on the horizon? I'm hoping to compete again next year. It's a bit nerve-wracking because I'm not sure if I'll be as strong as I was before the injury, but I'm going to give it everything I've got. My goal is to keep improving and who knows, maybe even go pro someday. But for now, I'm focused on getting back in shape and staying positive. And we have no doubt you'll get there. It's been amazing hearing your story. You've shown so much resilience and determination, it's really inspiring. Hi, I'm Carolina and I'm 20. Yeah, I play tennis. It's been my passion for years now. Well, I actually started when I was about 10. My dad used to take me to the park and we just hit the ball around for fun. I wasn't serious about it at first, honestly. A lot of people didn't really believe I could make it far, so I didn't believe it either. Most people outside my family really. You know how it is, people see a girl with big dreams and they're quick to say, oh, it's just a hobby. But my parents? They've always had my back. They kept pushing me, even when I wasn't sure if I could do it. Well, there was this one coach. I was 14 when I started working with him. At first I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't want to disappoint my parents or waste time on something that felt like a long shot. But this coach? He saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. He convinced me to take it seriously to give it my all. Yeah, not exactly. I was doing great for a while but then. I got injured. It was during a match. I was pushing myself really going for it and then. I felt this sharp pain in my knee. Turns out I tore a ligament. That was it for a while I had to stop playing completely. At first? Not well. I was angry, frustrated. I couldn't play, couldn't train, and I felt like everything I'd worked for was slipping away. There were days when I thought about giving up, you know? Like, maybe this is a sign that tennis just isn't for me. Nope. My family wasn't about to let me quit that easily. My dad especially, he kept reminding me that setbacks are just part of the journey. He'd say, champions aren't the ones who never get knocked down, they're the ones who keep getting back up. Well, I went through rehab for my knee and it took a while, but I'm finally getting back into training. It's been slow and it's frustrating sometimes because I'm not where I used to be. But I'm more determined than ever now. I've got this fire in me to come back stronger. Honestly, the hardest part wasn't the injury itself but the doubt that came with it. There were moments when I felt like maybe everyone who didn't believe in me was right. But every time I started feeling that way my family was there to pull me out of it. And now my coach is back in my corner, pushing me to reach new heights. I'm hoping to compete again next year. It's a bit nerve-wracking because I'm not sure if I'll be as strong as I was before the injury, but I'm going to give it everything I've got. My goal is to keep improving and who knows maybe even go pro someday. But for now I'm focused on getting back in shape and staying positive.
Now that we've followed our guests in their inspiring conversations about goals and overcoming challenges, let's take a moment to go over some important words and phrases that might be new to you. Understanding these will help you better appreciate the conversations and expand your English vocabulary. Let's dive into the key words and phrases from both conversations. From the first conversation. Genius. Explanation. This word refers to someone with exceptional talent or intelligence in a specific area, far beyond the average person. Example from the conversation. The boy says, I'm kind of a genius in programming. Here, he's acknowledging his exceptional skills in programming, despite his challenges. Bullying. Explanation. This term describes when someone is repeatedly harmed, intimidated, or humiliated by others. Bullying can happen verbally, physically, or online. Example from the conversation, the boy mentions, sometimes I get bullied for being in a wheelchair, meaning others make fun of or harm him because of his condition. Aspire. Explanation, this verb means to aim or have an ambition to achieve something significant in the future. Example from the conversation, he says, I aspire to be the best programmer. Here, he expresses his strong desire to achieve a high level of success in programming. Prove. Explanation. To prove means to show the truth or demonstrate something by using evidence or action. Example from the conversation, the boy states, I want to prove that nothing is impossible, meaning he wants to show through his achievements that anyone can overcome obstacles. Support system. Explanation. A support system refers to the people who provide emotional, financial, or practical help during difficult times. Example from the conversation, he mentions, my family is my support system, meaning his family helps him through his challenges and encourages him to keep going. From the second conversation. Torn ligament. Explanation. This is a medical term referring to a serious injury where a ligament, the tissue connecting bones, is stretched or torn. Example from the conversation, Carolina says, I tore a ligament during a match, meaning she suffered a severe injury that forced her to stop playing tennis temporarily. Setback. Explanation, a setback is an event that delays or prevents progress, often making it harder to reach a goal. Example from the conversation, Carolina says, the injury was a setback, meaning the injury delayed her progress in tennis. Rehab. Explanation, short for rehabilitation, this word refers to the process of recovering from an injury through therapy and exercises. Example from the conversation, she mentions, I went through rehab for my knee, meaning she did special exercises and therapy to recover from her knee injury. Go pro. Explanation, this slang phrase means to become a professional in a specific sport or activity, usually after playing as an amateur. Example from the conversation, Carolina says, maybe I'll go pro one day, meaning she hopes to become a professional tennis player in the future. Fire in me. Explanation, this phrase means having strong motivation or passion to achieve something, despite obstacles or challenges. Example from the conversation, she says, I've got this fire in me to come back stronger, meaning she feels highly motivated to recover from her injury and continue improving in tennis.